Hi and welcome to a new Army Recognition Defense Web TV. In this November edition we will bring you three new show reports. The first one on the Partner 2013 Defense Show that was held this year in Belgrade. The second one on MSPO 2013 held in early September in Poland. And the third one on the DSCI event which took place last month in London. We will then focus on the naval field with the delivery of the first Mistral class landing ship for the Russian Navy. And finally, we will cover some of the latest developments in the Taiwanese defense industry. Up next, the news in brief. The US recently deployed 200 Marines to the Sigonella Air Base in Sicily. The move underlines how US forces have been building a network of bases in Italy as launch pads for possible military interventions in Africa and the Middle East. Another key factor is the US president's switch in his counter-terror strategy from drone strikes against Al-Qaeda to pinpoint raids by small special forces teams as seen in Somalia and Libya in early October. The Russian Army Expo was held from September 25th to 28th, 2014. The exhibition, held in Nizhny Tagil, seeks to promote Russian military equipment, arms and ammunition to both domestic and foreign markets. Two new vehicles were unveiled at Russian Army Expo 2014. Russian defense company Ural Wagon Zavod unveiled its new tank support armored fighting vehicle BMPT-72 or Terminator 2. The new vehicle is based on the T-72 MBT chassis but is equipped with a new turret with dual cannon and anti-tank missile launchers. Ural Wagon Zavod also introduced a new wheeled vehicle in cooperation with French company Renault Trucks Defense. The Atom 8x8 is a 30 tons armored infantry fighting vehicle. It combines the experience of Ural Wagon Zavod in armored hulls and armament with the French company's expertise in mobility. Renault Trucks Defense is supplying the power train for the, its 8x8 design to offer all-terrain mobility equivalent to that of a tracked vehicle. The Technical Research and Development Institute of Japan's Ministry of Defense unveiled its new 8x8 mobile combat vehicle. The MCV is an armored personal carrier equipped with a three-man turret mounted in the center of the hull and armed with a 105mm gun. The Africa Aerospace and Defense Exhibition, AAD 2014, launched its new website this month. AAD 2014 is one of the world's premier aerospace and defense exhibition that holds a prominent position within the aviation and defense calendar. This exhibition takes place in Pretoria from the 17th to the 21st of September next year. Soldiers from the 5th Canadian Army Mechanized Brigade Group got the chance to test out the Tactical Armored Patrol Vehicle this month. The TAPV is one of four major acquisition programs by the Canadian Army to augment its family of land combat vehicles. In a recent American Missile Defense Agency test, the US Navy launched two Raytheon-made Standard Missile 3 Block 1B from the USS Lake Erie cruiser against the complex, separating, short-range ballistic missile target. The first SM-3 eliminated the target. The second missile was designed to test the ship weapon system's ability to launch multiple missiles at one time against a threat. Photos have emerged on the internet showing that the Chinese Navy type 052D guided missile destroyer started sea trials in the East China Sea. Considered as the Chinese counterpart of the American Aegis destroyers, the Type 052D class comes with its own AESA radar and packs an impressive firepower with 64 vertical launch system cells and the ability to deploy a mix of long-range surface-to-air missiles, anti-ship missiles and land attack cruise missiles. Dassault Aviation and Thales signed with the French Ministry of Defense a contract to modernize the French Navy's fleet of Atlantic II maritime patrol aircraft. The contract consists in the modernization of 15 ATL-2s, which will receive new optronics, a new AESA radar, upgraded mission software and work workstation. The upgrade program will improve the ATL-2's ability to deal with new and emerging threats under all weather conditions both in strategic deterrence roles and in asymmetric conflicts. The US Navy and the 33rd Fighter Wing at Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, officially reformed the highly decorated VFA-101 Grim Reaper Squadron during ceremonies, 
VFA-101 will fly the US Navy's newest aircraft, the Lockheed Martin F-35C Lightning II carrier variant, to perform the missions of training pilots and sailors to fly and service the aircraft fleet. The French Air Force accepted the first production F-A-400M new generation airlifter during an official ceremony at the factory in Spain. The aircraft, the first of 50 ordered by France out of a total of 174 on order worldwide, will be based at Orléans Air Base and initially used for training before being deployed on military missions. First delivery to the Turkish Air Force should happen in the coming weeks, was delivery to the Royal Malaysian Air Force should happen in 2015. Serbia's Defense Ministry and the government plan to make the defense industry a driving force in the country's industrial production and economic development, Serbian Defense Minister said while opening Partner 2013, the sixth international exhibition of arms and military equipment, which was held in Belgrade in June. Partner 2013 brought together a record 92 manufacturing and trading companies, including 16 from major powers in the defense industry, such as the US, Russia, France, and Germany. Yugoslav Petkovic, acting general director of the public enterprise Yugo Import, who also spoke at the event's opening, said that the company plans to position itself as a major producer of armaments and military equipment, besides being a trader. In the next few months, Yugo Import will open an office in Iraq and reopen its office in Algeria, he said. Petkovic said that the Lazar II, an armored vehicle whose prototype was premiered at the trade show, will be one of the strong points of the Serbian defense industry. The new multi-role armored vehicle Lazar II 8x8 is based on modifications and technical solutions implemented on a functional model of the existing Lazar I vehicle. The concept of Lazar II represents a combination of MRAV and MRAV class of vehicles, but is closer to the MRAV concept mainly because of its independent suspensions. In August 2013, the Pakistani army announced the purchase of three Lazar II. The Alas Lorana family of long-range missiles belongs to the category of modern perspective systems of long-range non-line-of-sight guided missiles. The system of guidance for the entire family of missiles is based on the application of inertial navigation system halfway to its target. It follows a flight plan matching the trajectory planned during preparation of the mission using digital map on the console of common information system. Local defense company Yugo Import also presented its full range of wheeled self-propelled howitzer. Very active in the wheeled self-propelled howitzer market, the Serbian company displayed three different models during the event. The self-propelled artillery system Nora B-52 family 155mm is fitted with a 52 caliber barrel. It's the first complex combat system developed by Yugo Import which has entered serial production. The self-propelled rapid response drug mounted weapon Soko is a 122mm D-30G gun howitzer turret mounted on the chassis of a robust 6x6 heavy duty vehicle. Soko 122mm is a modern artillery system primarily intended for fast interventions and quick response to the challenges of contemporary warfare. The MO9 105mm self-propelled truck-mounted howitzer represents a modern fire support weapon system, particularly for modern joint combat units and rapid deployment forces, intended for rapid response to challenges of modern digital battlefield including large anti-terrorist and anti-guerrilla operations. At this year's 21st MSPO exhibition, which was held in Poland in early September, 25,000 square meters of exhibition space was a showcase for 400 companies from 23 countries. The main topics of MSPO 2013s were air defense systems for the Polish Shield project, multi-role helicopters, and an innovating Polish tank concept. As the official online show daily, the Army Recognition editorial team covered each of these topics and more. The new tank unveiled at MSPO 2013 by Polish Defense Holding and BAE System is created at the Obrum Research and Development Center of Mechanical Devices in Gliwice. 
The goal of this joint venture between BAE and PDH is to create a new platform. This concept of flight tank infantry fighting vehicle named PL01 is here to help formalize the Polish requirements for their future tender. During the event, we had the chance to ask a few questions about this concept to General Lamla, Deputy Chief Technology Officer at Obrum. Uh, you know that uh, at the beginning of the previous year, our Minister of Defense announced the start of now our the new ARMO national program. There are the few the pillars of this program. It means that first is modernization of the Leo 2A4, the second is the new Polish main battle tank, and the modernization of the, the uh, APC Rosomak and others, of course. Uh, this program, which is dedicated to the new main battle tank, which was it was dedicated to our the company. Therefore, therefore, we decided just to, uh, to develop, start to develop the, the, the new concept, new main battle tank. As you can see, we prepared to our exhibition in Kielce the, mo uh, the concept of the tank, which will be the first step uh, on the way to the real the tank, which should be ready till the end 2011. The MSBS or Modular Small Arm System is primed to be the next generation assault rifle for the Polish Armed Forces. Designed entirely in Poland as a collaboration between the Military Technical Academy and the Luxnik Firearms Plant in Radom, this platform has seen many changes over the years of testing and development. At MSPO, the MSBS was presented in its latest configuration. The main goal of the project is to supply Polish armed forces with a modular platform built around the 556 NATO round, modular meaning the capacity for changing the firearms role in field conditions with simple tools. The MSBS family is to include a classic carbine, bullpup carbine, bullpup subcarbine, LMG and DMR configurations. Polish defense company AMZ Kutno presented a new vehicle prototype at MSPO 2013, the Amphibious Bobber 4x4 vehicle. The Bobber, standing for Beaver in Polish, was developed as a possible replacement of the Polish Army Gas BRDM2 4x4 scout cars, while the LPU is a Land Rover 90 based 4x4 off-road vehicle. The LPU is AMZ Kutno's proposal for the Polish Armed Forces Viper Light Strike Vehicle program. Poland is planning to acquire 118 fast attack vehicles for Polish Special and Reconnaissance Units. Air defense was one of, if not the main topic at MSPO this year. With the recent technical dialogue launched by the Polish Ministry of Defense for a new air defense system and anti-ballistic missile capability, several companies showcased their solutions. Israeli company IAI showcased its Arrow 2 anti-ballistic missile. MBDA France showcased its Aster 30 surface-to-air missile. American company Raytheon exhibited its Patriot air and missile defense system. MBDA Germany, with its partner Lockheed Martin, showcased the MIDS medium extended air defense system. MIS provides a meaningful industrial cooperation uh, offer for the Polish industries. Its capabilities are needed today. It costs less than existing systems and meets, uh, met all its commitments until today. The LSV vehicle LPU-1 was designed to answer Polish Army's need for a universal vehicle for assault and special forces. The vehicle is built on the base of the widely available Toyota D40 off-road vehicle, thereby reducing the production cost, providing easy availability of spare parts and guaranteeing short delivery time of components. More details now on this vehicle with an interview we conducted during the event. Okay, this vehicle was designed to meet the uh, demand of Polish army. Reconnaissance troops wanted to and still want to have this kind of vehicle and we prepare it basing on the on the chassis of Toyota Hilux, Hilux to make this vehicle as simple as possible and to make it be able to, to be used in every corner of the world. This vehicle can be used as well not only by reconnaissance troops but by special forces and of course we are we are going to promote this vehicle on foreign markets as well. DSCI is the world's largest fully integrated defense and security exhibition that brings together the entire industry to source the latest equipment and systems, develop international relationships and re generate new business opportunities. DSCI 2013 was held last month in London. Our team was attending the event as media partner and here is our report. 
During DSCI 2013, Spanish company Expal presented its latest products and services among its main lines of activity. One of its new products is the bird-shaped micro-UAV Shepherd Mill. Expal's Shepherd Mill is an autonomous aerial reconnaissance device in the shape of a bird, silent and discreet, which incorporates two day-night cameras and allows automatic takeoff and landing, as well as weapon navigation. It is a perfect system for land and maritime border controls, operations against anti-drug operations or intelligence services. More details on the Shepherd Mill with an interview about the system we conducted at the event. We are still on the Expal exhibit with Manuel Martin, sales director at Expal, in front of a very unique UAV. What can you tell us about uh, this uh, UAV that looks like a bird? This is our micro UAV solution uh, with a beer shaped camouflage. It means it goes advantage against other solutions because you don't need to fly higher than others. Just 100 meters is enough to get information from the cameras. It is a spy in the sky because it's a bird, so nobody knows that it's a, an aircraft. The system is composed by two cameras, one of them in the front and the other at the bottom, to get information for surveillance purposes or target positions to transmit the information to the command post in order to take any actions. The system has an autonomy around one hour. It means uh, 15, 20 kilometers depending on weather conditions. The M777 is a 155mm 39 caliber towed gun designed and manufactured by BAE Systems which, through proven technology and the innovative use of titanium and aluminium alloys, meets the requirements for rapidly deployable and accurate artillery fire support. The M777 is normally operated by a crew of 8 men, but can be operated with a reduced detachment of 5. The systems fitted with the digital fire control system are designated M777A1 and those with the software update which allows the firing of the Excalibur projectile M777A2. The A2 received full material release in July 2007, clearing the upgrade for fielding. All A1 systems will be upgraded to the A2 standard. React Defense of Switzerland revealed at DSCI that it has developed a new and lighter version of its combat proven side pro lasso vehicle protection system and that this has already been sold to one export customer. The side pro lasso is a wire mesh type system that is mounted a short distance from the vehicle and protects the platform from attack by the widely deployed rocket propelled grenade with a single high explosive anti tank warhead. The original system entered service in 2007 and has been sold to Denmark, Estonia, and Slovenia. It has already saved many soldiers' lives in Afghanistan, according to Rurag Defense. The latest side pro lasso system has been developed in close collaboration with the customer and offers a reduction in weight by up to 30% and an increase in the area protected. Diamond Shell, the naval shipbuilding, introduced a new compact Sigma line during DSCI 2013. One of the major advantages of the Compact Sigma series is that the benefits from a large ship have been recreated in a smaller version, with ship sizes ranging from 600 tons to 1500 tons displacement and a length overall from 59 meters to 87 meters. This smaller sized ship can have the same combat systems and capabilities but with a shorter range and a mission endurance of up to 2 weeks. Thales integrated mast may be fitted as an option. At DSCI 2013, Beretta showcased the next generation of small arms with the ARX-160 and GLX-160. Both are closely integrated and developed in conjunction with the future soldier program of the Italian army to cater to all requirements of the modern soldier. The ARX-160 A3 can be configured in numerous variants depending on operational requirements with minimum change of parts. The ARX is capable of single shot and fully automatic fire. The weapon was NATO qualified in 2010 after undergoing stringent testing in adverse conditions and various operational scenarios and is the only in-production and in-service multi-caliber weapon with three calibers available on the market. At DSCI 2013, French company Nexter Systems unveiled its new tactical infantry transport and utility system, the Titus. 
The vehicle combines the experience and technology of Nexter's innovations over the years to the state-of-the-art of Tatra chassis, one of the main leaders of military truck producer. At DSCI 2013, Philippe Bertin, the chairman and CEO of Nexter, said that the Titus family took two years of internal development and investment by the company and provided a cost-efficient, wheeled armored vehicle solution. We had the chance to interview Michel Lottier, military advisor at Nexter, shortly after the launch ceremony. We are on the Nexter stand at DSCI 2013 in London, UK, with Michel Lottier, military advisor at Nexter Systems. Nexter unveiled today a brand new 6x6 armored vehicle, the Titus. Mr. Lottier, what uh, can you tell us about the Titus? Uh, what I would highlight is the concept of the vehicle. Uh, this vehicle has been developed by Nexter. We started a couple of years ago after a deep study of the evolution in uh, tactics and operational environment. And this vehicle is based on this study. So this vehicle is fully modular, so uh, you can adapt the level of protection from level 2 up to level 4 for A, for B, for uh, ballistic IEDs, at least 50 kilograms of TNT at 5 meters. Uh, you can adapt the remote weapon station from 7.62 millimeter up to 20 millimeter and you can uh, fit the vehicle with any kind of other equipment like situation awareness, battle management system or any kind of uh, equipment like uh, uh, shot, de uh, shot detectors or whatsoever, jammers if you will need. Vladivostok, the first of two LHD amphibious landing ships on order from DCNS for the Russian Federation, was floated out of its building dock at STX France's saint Nazaire shipyard on October 15th. The Navy recognition team was on site to cover this historic event. The Russian Mistral program has proceeded as planned since the contract came into effect in late 2011, with the vessels on schedule for delivery in late 2014 and late 2015 respectively. The launch ceremony was attended by senior officials representing the French and Russian navies and shipbuilding industries. Among them, Admiral Viktor Shirkov, Chief of Naval Staff of the Russian Federation Navy and his French Navy counterpart, Bernard Roger. Patrick Boissier, Chairman and CEO of the DCNS Group, and Laura Castin, President of STX France, were also present. Following a religious ceremony by an Orthodox priest, the officials signed the hull of the ship. The name of the vessel was then revealed, and the Vladivostok was officially christened. Finally, the building dock was floated so that the Vladivostok LHD could float for the first time. The second Mistral class LHD for Russia, the Sevastopol, is due to be floated out in October 2014. The bow part of the vessel could be seen in the shipyard. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, both warships will be based in the far east ports of Vladivostok and Petropavlovsk when they enter service. According to Andrei Vernigora, director of the Russian Defense Ministry's Procurement Department, a decision to express an option to build a third and fourth Mistral for the Russian Navy will be taken based on the experience of testing the first one. Designed by DCNS, Mistral LHDs are multi-mission 21,500 tons amphibious assault, command and power projection ships. Mistral class vessels are capable to accommodate and deploy 16 transport or attack helicopters, 4 landing craft, up to 70 vehicles or 13 main battle tanks. They have accommodations for 450 to 700 troops. The French military recently used those capacities to project its troops for operations in Mali. Each ship of the class is equipped with a 69-bed hospital. Three Mistral class LHDs are already in service with the French Navy. The Mistral, the Tonnerre and the Dixmud. The two LHDs for the Russian Navy, the Vladivostok and Sevastopol, have some small modifications. We asked the program manager about those modifications during the Vladivostok launch ceremony. Well, the main difference are the fact that this ship has been modified in order to withstand the uh, climatic environment of Russia, which means being able to work at minus 25 degrees. This includes 
modification of the steel grade, uh, modification of the power unit in order to be able to maintain the helicopter dock uh, free of ice and of course uh, we have adapted this ship to the um, Kamov helicopter. Uh, we have as well uh, modified the combat system in order to incorporate or integrate a lot of Russian equipment in the communication equipment as well as combat system equipment from uh, Russia. The Russian Mistral Air Wings are expected to include 8 Kamov Ka-52K Alligator attack helicopters and 8 Ka-29 assault transport helicopters. DCNS will also build, in partnership with STX, four LCMs for the Russian LHGs. They will be able to project troops, equipment and vehicles for beach landing operations. The four LCMs are currently being built by DCNS in partnership with STX and will be delivered in 2014 along with the Vladivostok. Vladivostok type Mistrals are set to receive a fully Russian weapons fit at the Severnaya Firth shipyard in St. Petersburg before being handed over to Russia's Pacific Fleet. Self protection against air threats will be fulfilled by two Gibka 3M47 air defense missile systems one located at the bow, port side, and another system located at the stern, starboard side. Two AK-630M closing weapon systems are set to be fitted for close-range protection against air and surface threat. Some 14.5mm heavy machine guns are planned to be installed on both ships for protection against close-range asymmetrical threats. Finally, four DP-65 anti saboteur grenade launchers will be fitted on each side of the vessels. It is designed for protection of ships against attacks of underwater combat swimmers through the use of underwater grenades. Confronted with an ever-growing Chinese military and with almost no allies willing to trade defense products with them anymore, Taiwan is left with no other choice but to develop its own indigenous air, land and naval systems. Some of these systems were showcased at the Taipei Aerospace and Defense Technology Exhibition, which was held in August this year. Army Recognition's chief editor attended the event to bring you some of the latest Taiwanese defense innovation. The Taipei Aerospace and Defense Technology Exhibition takes place every two years in the capital of Taiwan. During the event, most of the local defense technologies and innovations were shown to the professional visitors. Taiwan's Navy unveiled for the first time a land-based version of the locally designed and produced Xiong Feng 3 or HF3 supersonic anti-ship cruise missile. The mobile launcher is a six-wheeled trailer carrying four canisters. Each canister can launch one HF-3 missile. No official figures have ever been released, however the HF-3 missile is expected to have a range of 130 km and is reported to be capable of reaching speeds of Mach 2. By feeding HF-3 on mobile launchers, Taiwan increases its ability in defending against an amphibious attack. Taiwan's Navy also revealed that two vessel prototypes were under construction by the Longdig Shipbuilding Corporation. The first is a catamaran corvette for littoral warfare under the Sun High or Swift Sea program. With a length of 60.4 meters, this corvette-sized vessel is designed for littoral operations. Described officially as a high-efficiency wave-piercing catamaran, the vessel is heavily armed for its size as it is fitted with no less than 16 anti-ship missiles. Representatives at the show said that the catamaran corvette may fire both HF-2 and HF-3 missiles making it a potent anti-surface warfare platform. The second vessel under construction is a fast combat support ship to replace aging replenishment ships. CSIST unveiled a new unmanned helicopter, the Magic Eye Mini UAV system for short-range combat reconnaissance, surveillance and target acquisition missions. The Magic Eye has a stealthy configuration with an endurance of 30 to 60 minutes at a speed of 50 km per hour. The Taiwanese Army presented its new multi-caliber MLRS RT-2000. The rocket launcher system is mounted on an 8x8 manned military truck. The RT-2000 MLRS is designed to offer the possibility to use three types of rockets. It can use 60 MK-15 117mm rockets with a range of 15km. It may also use 
MK-30 180mm rockets with a range of 30 km. Finally, it may deploy 12 MK-45 230mm rockets with a range of 45 km. The Taiwanese Army has taken delivery of its first local-made RT-2000 system from CSIST in September 2012 to replace the Army's existing rocket system which entered service over 30 years ago. More than 50 systems are currently planned for production by the Taiwanese Ministry of National Defense. CSIST demonstrated two new short-range automated defense weapon systems, the single-gun XTR-101 naval system and a dual-gun XTR-102 fixed-position system, both armed with T-75 20mm guns. The XTR-101 is equipped with a 40 times power zoom length and the XTR-102 is equipped with an electro-optical system. CSIST also exhibited a new Kestrelman portable rocket launcher capable of firing both anti-armor ash and heat rockets. Taiwan's Marine Corp has expressed an interest in this rocket system. The Special Operations Forces Exhibition and Conference SOFEX takes place every two years at the King Abdullah I Air Base in Amman in the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. This niche event is held under the royal patronage of His Majesty King Abdullah II, the chairmanship of Prince Faisal bin Al Hussein, and with the full support of the Jordan Armed Forces. SOFEX is a four-day event that kicks off with a prominent one-day conference that includes a series of comprehensive and topical seminars delivered by top military officials from around the world, tackling a wide range of issues pertinent to current counter-terrorism and homeland security issues. Army Recognition is the official online show daily for SOFEX 2014. To increase your business impact and exposure before, during and after the show, contact our marketing team now. This is Xavier from Army Recognition, the official online daily for SOFEX 2014. And we are reporting today from DSCI 2013 with Mr. Amr Taba, Exhibition Director of SOFEX. Mr. Taba, thank you for having us. Can you start by introducing uh, SOFEX with a few historical facts and uh, numbers? SOFEX was started by His Majesty King Abdullah back in 1996 to fill a void that was noticed for this equipment for special forces and homeland security. Uh, and SOFEX has grown since then. In, in 2014, we'll be organizing our 10th edition of SOFEX. And for the last five years, we have been ranked number one in the world in the niche uh, for special forces and homeland security. Uh, up until 2012, the last exhibition and conference that we have organized, we have grown more than 300%, not only in uh, the number of exhibitors, but as well in the number of official delegations that come in. It has, SOFEX has become the rendezvous place for the global special forces, special operations forces and homeland security. The innovation that is exhibited at SOFEX every time is uh, very worthwhile and, uh, and uh, fill specific needs that are developed in between the suffixes of the world. Exhibiting is even more important because this is where uh, you rub shoulders with the biggest innovators in the niche. Uh, Suffix is an exhibition and conference that is not open to the public. This is only trade and interested uh, parties participate, whether on the demand or supply side. So the exchange of information and the exchange of uh, networks is very, very significant at SOFEX. This is what made it number one in the world. Finally, what makes uh, SOFEX a unique event compared to other defense events? 
Suffix is unique in many, many different ways. It's a multi-product event. Uh, the conference is attended by more than 680 generals or ministers of defense from around the world. We host north of or more than 60 countries or 62 countries that come in uh, to exchange views, information, innovation and technology at Suffix. Mr. Taba, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. This was uh, Xavier reporting from uh, DSCI 2014 for Army Recognition, the official online media for Suffix 2014.